the thing I loved about Jim the most in the beginning was just that he was so much fun. I was had been widowed at a young age. I'd been a single mom for several years, and I hadn't had very much fun in my life. So it was just refreshing to be with someone that knew how to be goofy and silly and turn everything into fun. But it was obvious that he was seriously looking for a wife after losing his wife, first wife, to a long illness. And he seemed to be falling in love with me. And I kept putting the brakes on, like, slow down, slow down. Uh, finally, when I was ready to say, one evening I did say to him, if there's any possibility that we would make a good marriage, I have a few things I'm concerned about that I'd like to talk about. <clears throat> we were sitting in his car. He grabbed his steering wheel and he says, okay, shoot, tell me what's first on your list. And I actually think that's when I fell in love with him, that he was willing to talk about my feelings, uh, issues, issues that were difficult for me, things that I needed answers to before I could commit myself to him. <clears throat> and just one by one, I shared with him my concerns and he answered very honestly, very truthfully, no defensiveness, and um, I liked his answers. Then uh, we, a few months later, we did marry and combined our two families. We had five children between us. Four of them were teenagers, uh, one eight-year-old tornado that was Jim's. But we had a, a difference of opinion that was started out very small. And in the beginning, we could work it out, kiss and make up, make a new agreement. But as the agreements uh, fell apart, they didn't work long term. We each became more and more frustrated. And um, our communication methods deteriorated. Finally, we began looking for some help and eventually found a coach that began to teach us some ways of speaking respectfully, even when we were in conflict, uh, some very practical ways to manage our anger. And Jim was right in there with me, willing to learn and practice these new skills because we both wanted the result of a happy and more loving marriage. He was very confident in his own accomplishments and his own abilities. And I think for that reason, he didn't, he didn't feel any sense of threat. The more accomplished I became, the more, uh, the more I was able to produce, the, the more excited he was for me. He wanted other people to be exposed to my intelligence and my skill in coaching. After he passed away in 2005, I wasn't sure that I would keep doing what I what we had been doing together. But after the dust settled, I realized there was nothing else I was passionate about. I still wanted to help other couples achieve the level of happiness that Jim and I had achieved in our marriage. Uh, over the next, it's been 17 years now since he passed. I still feel his belief in me and his support of me. Uh, I miss holding hands with him. I miss cuddling. I miss his presence in our home. And I also miss the fact that my very best and most enthusiastic cheerleader is not physically present with me anymore, although I still know he's cheering for me. <laughs>